Hi, this is Stacey Roshan. I'm so excited to have a chance to share today how I've used Cami over the years and ways that I've seen other educators use Cami in their classroom with a real emphasis on collaboration. As some background, I am both a tech integrationist and also a math teacher. I've been teaching a section of purely online AP Calculus for a number of years, and Cami was a very important part of my workflow for that course. Not only is Cami a powerful collaboration tool for group work, but it's also a way for me to be able to provide real-time feedback to my students in an online or remote learning setting. And to me, that has been so key in providing my students what they need the most. My fascination with EdTech stems from a place of trying to understand how technology can help us bring a deeper level of compassion into our classrooms and our teaching. I truly believe that technology can be a way to create a safer learning environment for all students to be able to express themselves and for us to get to know our learners and their needs on a very personal level. I started flipping my classroom back in 2010, and that was a major transformation in terms of how I was able to interact with my students. By offloading the very teacher-directed portion of class to video, I was able to free up class space to really revolve around student needs. By asking students to watch a video with embedded questions before they even walked into the classroom, I was able to get detailed analytics on what information the class was understanding and what practice we needed to do for the day. It also really freed me up and freed up class time for students to problem solve collaboratively and for me to join in on their discussions and their conversations. Now, flipping the classroom was just a start for me. As I looked to technology, I discovered ways to provide my students a variety of platforms to respond and interact with class material. One of the driving questions these past few years for me has been, how can we as educators and leaders embrace technology to ensure that all voices in the room are heard? When I began teaching in an online setting, one of my biggest challenges was thinking how I was going to mimic looking over a student's shoulder in the classroom. We get so much information and insight into how students are doing just by seeing them work. And as a math teacher, I'm constantly walking around the room, stopping at a student's desk, looking at what they've written on their paper and coaching and guiding them from where they are. Everyone who is teaching in a remote learning or a hybrid setting right now is facing that same type of challenge, and it's really a huge one. So here's one idea to use during class time when everyone is working together. As a math teacher, most of my students are handwriting on a piece of paper. Digital inking isn't really possible for my students since they don't have a tablet with a pen. I do have that technology though, which I will talk more about in just a moment, so I can take really great advantage of that. But let's just keep things really simple and say that I have a whole class of students that are working on five problems. What I can do is create a Cami document with five pages, one page for each question, and at the top of each page, I simply write the problem, and that's it. I leave the rest of the page blank for students to post any questions as they're working through the problems. As they get stuck, they can take a snapshot of whatever they are writing on their piece of paper and insert it directly into the Cami document. That way, I can see what they've already tried and I can help them from there. And this is also a really great way to monitor group work. If you have students in breakout rooms, for instance, because it gives you a dashboard of what's happening around the classroom and in each group so that you know where you are needed the most. You can either make one Cami document for the full class or if it's smaller group work where you don't want students to see what the other groups are doing, then you can make all different Cami documents, one for each group. 
Let me go ahead and demo exactly what I mean. So I have a Kami document, I'm making this a collaborative document so that everybody in my class can contribute. I just created it with the problem at the top. That's all I've done. These two images were submitted by students because they needed help. Well, let me show you how they would do that. If I was a student, I would simply click on the add media button and then click on my computer. If they're doing this from the phone, they can take the screenshot right on their phone. They can go ahead and just upload a picture of whatever they had written on their piece of paper and then drop it in the document. It's as simple as that. At this moment, I know that the student has a question and I can help them. The other thing I really enjoy doing is giving students a set amount of time. So maybe they have 10 minutes to work on a set of problems and then we're going to take it to the board. So what I can do is I can take out my pen tool. So go to the drawing tool. I'm gonna to just choose red right now and I can use my pen. I have a tablet to write with and say that we wanna start with this problem and we can dig into a correction all together as a class. So we can say, all right, we had this step here, and now let's look at this next step. Let's see if this is correct. What if we were to FOIL this? We would get x squared. The outer is 2x, the inner is 3x, so that would be plus 5x. And then the last is plus 6. And at that moment in time, the class is probably telling me, oh, that's your mistake. It was supposed to be minus 6 and not plus 6. But with Cami here, I'm able to just make it very visual for the full class so that we can have a conversation and students can help their peers work through any challenges that they had. So this is a great way to address problems that students are actually having. They submit the screenshot of whatever they're writing on their piece of paper. They don't need any fancy technology to do this. And then you as a teacher can use a drawing tool if you have some type of a tablet to draw with. I personally use a Wacom tablet. If you have an iPad, you could use that. A touch screen, you could use that. And then I can be writing as we're talking things out as a class so that that visual cue is there. Because the moment that I wrote this is when the students in my class find the error. But it would be hard for them to just look and find the error. Now, what's great about this method is that students can simply insert their screenshot of what they've been doing on their piece of paper directly into the Kami, and it updates in real time so that I can see that. The students, they can just open the Kami even on their phone and take a picture directly in the Kami, or they can take it with their camera and, of course, upload it to their computer. I have a student tutorial that I'll share in the next slide if you're interested in doing something similar in your classroom or seeing more about exactly how that works. And then I can choose to follow up with an individual or a group or I can use the snapshot that the student has taken to actually bring the conversation to the board for discussion so that we're now talking about actual student work. And at that moment, when we are beginning to discuss a solution, that's when I can use my digital inking ability. I can choose the pen tool and then I can draw and we can talk out the problem in real time together. That way I'm really starting with the student work as the base and then we as a class, we're able to complete the problem together. Since I have a Wacom tablet, which I plug into my Mac, I have the ability to handwrite very easily and very neatly. And that's a way to bring the conversation to the board, but again, basing it on student work. Now, let me go back a couple years in my journey. As I flipped to my classroom, I began having these really robust, dynamic discussions in my classroom. But something that really bugged me, something that's always really bugged me, is hand raising. I actually start my book, Tech With Heart, with this quote. Some of our smartest students might be our quietest. How do we give them an opportunity to be vocal in class discussions without calling them out or making them feel uncomfortable? Some of our unsung superstars may need the time to think about their answers before speaking up. How do we shift from a culture of calling on and praising the student who raises their hand first? How do we shift from a first is best culture to one that sends the message that everyone's voice matters and that everyone has the potential to excel in the classroom? 
When we use real-time collaboration tools, we can give all students a chance to share. We can give some wait time so that all learners have a chance to contribute. A tool like Kami can allow students to upload a picture of their work or type it out depending on what works best for them. For those who are more vocal, their best work may shine when we bring that conversation to the board and talk about the various answers that people have contributed to our shared CAMI document. The thing is, I have now provided an outlet for all students to contribute their ideas. So when we do start discussing as a class, we are now talking about actual student work and we can celebrate the multiple approaches and ideas and not just the response of one individual student. So here are some of the scenarios we've talked about. That real-time dashboard to track student needs as they work during class time, either as a full class or in small groups. That same idea can be used for one-on-one -on -one work and tutoring. Just have a shared CAMI document between you and one student, and you can both be working in that same shared space. This is great to use over a screen share if you are distance. The benefit here is that both you and the student can actively be contributing to the document at the same time instead of having a screen share where one person is doing everything and the other is a very passive recipient. Let's go ahead and dig into an example where a student is working on a worksheet on the left and I have that same document open as a teacher on the right. This could be in a classroom or it can be when students are working at home. This all happens in real time because Kami is collaborative. As you can see, both of us are on the document at the same time. For this particular document, the student is going to just be drawing their answer. Let's let them choose a color. I'm going to have them choose bright green for this one. So say they're doing their work, four plus three, they're kind of drawing it out, four, adding three more, and they figure out that it's seven. As you can see in real time, it shows up on my end as the teacher. Maybe there's a delay of a couple seconds, but it is as real time as it gets. Say that the student goes to do this problem and they get stuck. They just don't understand how to handle the zero, for example. So if you're on a Zoom call, the student could say, hey, I'm stuck, and they could underline it for you. And you can be seeing that on your screen without having to do any type of a screen share or anything like that. And then you, as a teacher, can go ahead and choose the drawing tools and say that the teacher is using pink now. And they say, okay, zero plus five, well, we have nothing to start, but you get five more. How many do you have? And then you kind of come up with the answer together and you're drawing. So now I, as a teacher, am drawing and it's going to show up on the student screen in real time so that they can follow along so that you both can be working on the same paper. Same thing goes if say the student goes ahead and does something and they make a mistake and then you as a teacher are grading it. You can just grade it right on the same document that's already shared between you and the student. Let's go ahead and I'm still using my pink, and I could say, well, this one is incorrect. I can even give the student an audio comment right here. I could add a voice comment to give some voice to explain things out. I could record a video comment or a screen capture, or again, I can just use my drawing tools to X this one and then ask the student to try and revise if they can. In that instance, I would probably just leave a little text comment and say, please try drawing this one out to see if you get a different answer because I observed that the student had drawn things out in this problem, gotten it correct, and then did not in this problem and got it incorrect. So maybe I would leave that suggestion to the student and then they on their end would see that little dot and see that comment and then they could retry it and they could even reply back to me. Two and three more. And they might say, oh, yep, I got it. That's five and then they could reply back to you so that you knew that it was time to revise it. 
again, the magic in this is the real-time collaborative nature. We can both be on the same document at the same time. This works student to student or teacher to student. Cami is a tool that can really empower our students. And when we empower students with the resources they need and we coach them through the process of using these tools, then students can take ownership for their learning. And that's where the magic happens. Now, one more use case that I want to dive into is workflow and feedback. When I was teaching my online class, I had students do their work on a piece of paper and then they scanned that into their Google Drive folder and that Google Drive folder was shared with just me and the student. I could then open up that PDF file directly in Kami, as you see me doing here, and then I could use the pen tools to give any feedback that I needed. I could also use the text comment tool and type in any notes. I also love being able to create a screen recording or a voice recording directly in Kami. That really helps express emotion, which is something that can be challenging when just giving typed feedback. And what I love about doing this is the real time and collaborative nature of Kami. After students receive the feedback, they can correct their work. They can also ask any additional questions they have directly in the Kami. It really streamlines the workflow because we can do everything right in the Kami document without having to use any external tools. And we have rich features like the video recording and the voice recording to add that human element. Now, I've talked a lot about math so far, and I want to move to some examples that I've seen my colleagues doing. This one is from a Spanish teacher. She is using Kami to do read alouds with her students. Since it's hard to do some of this one-on-one -on -one work in a hybrid classroom, she's able to have students practice reading directly in Kami. And then she can reply to their voice comments to make any corrections. And again, that loop can happen. So let me go ahead and show you the same idea, but a different example. In this example, let's say that I have this diagram that I give each student and I want them to use that same idea of using voice comments, but here I want them to explain each of the parts and what they do and what this diagram means. So I can create this base worksheet with just a diagram in it. For each student, they make their own copy and then all they do is they go into comments and voice comments and then they would label the diagram with their voice, explaining things each step. So let's start with the human cell. So I would just click and explain that this is a human cell, stop. And then I can also color code. So here, since this was blue, I may as well make this little dot blue just so everything's color coded. And then I can do the same thing for each point on this diagram. I could go over here. The bacterial cell is blah, 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 stop. And then I can again color code that. So that's going to be green so that at each point, on the diagram, I now have a voice comment. So then the student submits that. And then when you as a teacher go to grade it, you can reply and you can just type if they did a nice job or you can reply back and use the voice typing, which is a nice little feature. And this transcribes whatever you are saying. That's an option. Or if you want to leave voice feedback, a voice correction, then you can do that same thing. So I could leave another voice comment right on top of their voice comment, giving them a little correction so that they would be able to view that. And I'm going to just X that to delete it so you can see what this looks like. Here's one more example from a Spanish classroom. The students were tasked with designing a solution here, and we had two groups of artists in this example that you're seeing, creating the sketches on paper that were then imported into Kami. And then someone else from the group was able to type the labels and complete the prompt that the teacher had asked. 
students were all doing this over a screen share because some students were in the classroom and some were at home. They were obviously able to chat everything out in a video call, but they were also able to do brainstorming in Kami and then put together their final product all in this one place. And each student in the group was able to actively contribute. So let's go ahead and actually dive into this example so you can see exactly what it looks like and how many students were collaborating on this particular document. Shout out goes to one of my amazing colleagues, Mr. Whitford, for bringing this to life. As you can see, this is just an image. A student imported an image from the web. This was something that they actually drew on their piece of paper and then they uploaded it. So they're adding all the media just through here and they can add the media from their computer. And then they use text boxes to type directly in Kami here. They use a drawing tool here to create some arrows and then again, some more text. So this was a great combination of some text tools and importing some images. So let me show you how that worked and let me also show you how you put the document in landscape mode. So it's a collaborative project, but one student would go ahead and start, create a new blank page, and then they could add all of their classmates as collaborators to this. Most of my students just use this share document option and then they make sure that it's editing privileges and then they share this link with the other team members that they have. That's kind of the quick and easy way to get started. If you wanna change the layout, then you can go to the menu over here and you can simply rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise. Let me make it a little bit bigger. All right, so to get started, I might add some media here so you can add some images from your computer. I'm gonna just do a Google image search right now and I'm going to look for a house. There we go. So they pulled in their images they dragged and dropped them and then you can resize them right here, very simple. Then maybe they want to put the title, so just a text box and I'm gonna click over here. They did some design in their example, so they did fill their box and then maybe make this bold, make it a little bit bigger. Again, they could resize this if they wanted to. That looks good to me. Then if they did a drawing, again, I'm not gonna draw anything by hand right now, but they just added the media and then uploaded it from their computer. They had taken a picture with their phone first and then they uploaded it to the Kami. I'm going to just choose one more image. Let's look for a kitchen this time. Okay, so maybe we're gonna do a house tour or something on my blue theme, drop it, resize it. So in this instance, if I wanted to draw a connector, let me choose a different color. I'll stay with my blue theme and uh, you can just draw the arrows. If you want to elaborate and explain something, students were just using the text boxes here. So I could choose another text box and let me make this a lot smaller and maybe I want to center it. So that is how things work. Students can work on this collaboratively again. So that's the beauty of this. Maybe one student was in charge of drawing the picture on the paper and then another student was responsible for marking it up with some labels and then another student was in charge of the design. They could collaborate and split up parts, but they really can be working on this all together. The only part that can't be worked on together in the example that I showed was this sketch. One student was doing the sketch on their piece of paper, so maybe they were brainstorming together, but they couldn't do this in real time unless they were drawing right in the cami. I think this this would be a little bit challenging to draw just with a mouse. So that's why they did it on paper. Anyway, that is how this example works. They also put in some nice little lines to kind of segment this. I loved their creativity there. So they did that simply by adding in a shape and then they added in some lines and they made them quite thick black lines. So make it black and then you can make it quite thick like that and so that would be the way to segment things and if you hold down the shift key while you're drawing the line then it locks into 90 degrees so that's a really nice tip hold down the shift key and you can lock that angle in place so that it doesn't move around boom there we go 
So as I close today, I'm going to leave you with this question that I also pose in my book, Tech With Heart. How can we cultivate compassion in our classrooms through the intentional integration of technology into the design of our lessons? After this session, is there anything that you'll do that you can start immediately? I really hope that this session has sparked an idea for you today. This slide is just an informational video if you wanna check out the tutorial I made to orient the teachers I work with to Kami. In it, I showcase how you can use Kami to create an interactive worksheet for students I love when teachers add either a voice recording to go over the instructions or a screen recording, walking students through how to do the first problem. This way, when students are working on things, they can hear the teacher's voice guiding them through the work. So I go over that in this video if you're interested in checking that out later. And here are a lot more resources that I have created about Kami. Again, I'm just leaving them in your handouts so that you can reference anything that will help you. And now we can get into the discussion and questions. Please also connect with me on Twitter if you are active there. My Twitter handle is at buddyxo. I also have a blog techiemusings.com. Uh, you can check that out for more resources or if you want to contact me, I have a contact form there as well. And finally, my book is Tech With Heart if that interests you. Thank you so much for joining me today. It was such a pleasure to be able to share the ideas that I've used in my classroom and that I've seen some of my wonderful colleagues do. Thanks again.